So where exactly do I begin with this thing we're talking about today, the Yeezy by Gap by Balenciaga hoodie. This was one of the first hoodies that released from the collection. Obviously there was a massive collection that came after that and I finally got mine in the mail because these things were all pre-production and there was all this talk about sizing because of the event that happened prior and the t-shirts the and stuff was crazy oversized. Bigger than the Yeezy by Gap hoodies that we saw and so there was cause for concern because I just did my normal size XL like I would do in a lot of brands knowing it was an oversized fit but I was worried. And unfortunately my worries were confirmed because this thing is comically oversized, like disastrously oversized. Like I look like my two year old trying to wear my clothes. That's how ridiculous this thing looks. So if you're coming for a fit and sizing review, you got a size way, way down. Like if I'm buying another one of these, I'm probably buying a medium. And I haven't been in a medium since probably 12 years old. So consider that for a moment. Think about how stupid that is actually when you really think about it. And I think this is kind of a lesson in hyper trendy things. I, I feel like this has just gone a little bit too far over the edge. And for a lot of us everyday folks that like things that are trendy and stylish, but also like them to you know fit more or less good, this is just, it's just not it. And I'm really afraid as to how this type of look and this hoodie in particular being as expensive as it is, is going to hold up over time because I'm a big believer in investing in the pieces that you own. But that doesn't mean there's nothing I like about this hoodie. I think, you know, there's a lot of potential here uh, if we could clean some things up. So let's get into the Yeezy by Gap Balenciaga hoodie dove. 35 pound thing here. Look, there's so much to like here. So don't, please don't click off just yet. Let's talk about it because there are a lot of high fashion elements that you don't see on hoodies sub $300. Still sounds ridiculous, but considering the fact that you could pay $1,100 for a designer hoodie if you so choose, there is some value here. Let's talk about it. Right, guys welcome back and now that you've seen a closer look of this heavy bad boy right here my name is steve thank you for joining us i took a little bit of a break it's good to be back i'm happy to see all of you again as we expand the channel started with sneakers now we're into fashion and things i'm going to be incorporating more golf two custom golf sneakers coming as well shout out to the futurist on mars speaking of hoodies but this one right here so right on the face of it you can say okay this is a balenciaga adjacent balenciaga-esque release technically from balenciaga if you really want to get nitpicky so the fact that a regular Balenciaga hoodie can run you seven, eight, nine, one thousand dollars. I'm not sure. Too much money, in my opinion. You can get one for around two forty nine, three hundred, depending on the resale. That in and of itself is a deal of sorts, but does that make this a good purchase, right? There's a big difference between getting something on a deal and something being a good purchase, right? Because really, if it's not that wearable in terms of does it fit you right? Is it gonna be an enduring style that can last you for some time? Then it's not a good deal, not a good purchase, no matter what kind of discount perceived or real you get on it. And that's kind of where I struggle with this hoodie because otherwise there's so much, I like about the quality, the construction, the design and everything. I mean, it's been a very long time since I've been in a hoodie that has gap across the chest. And that's not anything really against gap. I've just, you know, meandered through different waves of fashion and trying out all different types of brands and things. And the gap hoodie in a traditional sense has just not called my name in a number of decades. The idea that this is even on my radar now in a lot of ways is brilliant by Gap recruiting Kanye, giving him creative license, bringing in Balenciaga, creating a hype around all this, getting people that were otherwise not going to Gap.com to look for clothing are now there trying to buy clothing, let alone just look at it. So that is dope in and of itself. My biggest issue, like I said, is the hyper trendy nature of this cut, this size and this fit, because otherwise you're getting a lot of cool things here. So let's talk about the quality, the material, the design. You're getting that double layer effect, just like you get on the Yeezy Gap hoodies. Those I absolutely love and I advocate for. 
that is great because it's nice and it's heavy. It feels good. But what I like is that with the Yeezy Gap one and, his, and this one as well, you don't really get overheated in those. You think a double hoodie, it's like wearing two hoodies, but it's not. It's, it still keeps you warm, but it doesn't overheat you. That's a big deal for me because I overheat easily. I don't want that. And also like this is a really nice knit. You can just tell by holding it. If you've had other higher end brands that sell in that 150 to 250 range in terms of their crew necks and hoodies, you know a good knit when you see it. This one absolutely does accomplish that. This is not standard cheap mass produced Gap stuff. No, no offense Gap, but it is what it is. So, and then the stitching and the embroidery and everything, everything looks good here. Now, there are some other cool elements that I like. I like that this is almost monotone. I like that this is very subdued and I like that it's also not like an embroidered stitched in patch lettering. I like that it's just screen printed on there. I do like the distressing as well on the, the kind of the highlight of this hoodie, which is the dove on the back. This is dope. This really reminds me a lot of the Watch the Throne tour. It has to be kind of a callback to that, the Ricardo Tishi years. This is very, very dope. And I like that there's some distressing fading happening along the wings. It gets a little bit more clear around the dove and then on the edges here, you can see kind of that fading, that weathering, like it's almost already been washed a bunch of times. And it probably has. I wonder how much this would shrink if you really tried to shrink it down if you're stuck with a bigger size than you, than you hope to get like I am. And then other than that, obviously branding is very subdued. You still get the same Yeezy Gap logo out here. I would, would have liked to seen something that at least here said Balenciaga to denote and confirm that this was an engineered by Balenciaga collab like they say it is. Now the other thing I really, really like and I think is kind of a cool feature is how they did the sleeves and the end of the sleeves here with the cuffs and the hem. So it appears like there would have been a kind of traditionally sized hem here. And I do not have this, as you can see, try to get the focus there. I don't have this rolled in. This is actually how it is cut, how it's sewn in. They also achieve that along the bottom hem as well. So you can kind of see here, it really shows here, like you don't see the cuff very much when it's sitting at the waist, it folds underneath. And that gives it kind of like a folded up and layering over look, which depending on your size, if you're a bigger person, you don't need an accentuation of the kind of cupcake waist area. You know what I'm talking about, all right? I was there too. I've lost some weight, but I'm still with you guys. So that it's kind of sewn into itself. I feel like maybe the, the layer underneath of this double layer hoodie comes through and meets the, the end of the hem. It would otherwise just be here and they, fold it in and sew them together. And it almost gives it like a very worn in vintage, like maybe this was your dad's hoodie, or maybe you're one of those girls that steals all your boyfriend's hoodies. And you just, you kind of just have this thing permanently cuffed in like that because the sleeves are too long. But even with the cuff turned in like this, the sleeves are just too darn long, unfortunately. And that's where we're going to get into the biggest issue with this hoodie because otherwise I really like it. I like that there's no drawstrings. I like how clean the neckline is here. I like the way this hood sits better than the hood on the Yeezy Gap hoodies. The wash, the way that these are finished at the ends all gives it a real lived in kind of vintagey feel. And I really like that. Obviously vintage is a very popular thing. Maybe we should just buy vintage instead of recreating vintage and selling it at a high price point. But you get what I'm saying. So that is really, really dope. The problem obviously is that this thing hangs so big, it hangs so low, the sleeves are so long, it's just billowy. It doesn't, for me at least, when I wear it and when I look at myself, I don't get inspired by the way it sits on me and the way I look. Maybe I'm just missing the point, maybe I'm being hypercritical, but for me, it doesn't evoke the confidence that you wanna get in a piece of clothing when you put it on. That is half the battle. That's part of the reason why you gravitate towards certain pieces of clothing. Like this is about making you feel good, feel good, look good, confident. This does not, it does not instill confidence in me when I put it on. It looks like I'm just kind of being sloppy. I feel like a girl just running up to the gas station to pick something up after the gym, so I just threw a gigantic hoodie on. Outside of that, the one thing that I do worry about is the hyper trendy nature of the collaboration itself. The sizing aside, I wonder, I'm already kind of feeling like a little bit jaded by the whole thing. It was exciting when it happened and there was a lot of cool things to look at. And I don't know if maybe my taste just happened to start drifting in different directions. Maybe it's just summer and I'm not thinking too much about hoodies, but I often think about as I hold this hoodie, is this something I'm going to be wearing in the next year, two years, three years, four years down the road? Because I do have hoodies that I have worn for almost a decade now that are higher end, that I paid a lot of money for, that I am happy with because I have gotten almost a decade of use. Do I feel the same way about this hoodie? Because to me, that's the make or break of spending this amount of money. Like if I'm not going to be wearing this for years, the cost per wear is going to be high and it's not going to be worth it. And maybe more collections will keep dropping, they'll keep refining this style and I'll be wearing Yeezy Gap slash Balenciaga stuff for the next 10, 15 
15 years. I don't know, but this one in particular, I'm still unsure if it's going to be lasting a long time in my rotation. So that is something I think you should strongly consider before pulling the trigger on this because it's an exciting new thing. Like it's gotta last for you and it's gotta be worth it. So what do you do if you're looking to get your hands on one of these hoodies, you still really like the style, you're like, Steve, I want it, I just wanna get the sizing right. Well, I'm an XL. I got an XL in the Yeezy Gap hoodie and this is the XL as well. It fits more like a three, four XL, I would say in traditional sizing. So if I were to buy one now, I would go for a medium. That sounds drastic, I know, but I think two sizes down kind of makes sense. And if you're a girl, like I, I don't even know where to begin. I can't help you. So this is for me, guys that are like me size wise. I don't know where to begin with these things. Just maybe just go steal another hoodie from your boyfriend or something. You don't need to be spending your money on this. Despite my feelings on the sizing and the ridiculousness of this particular piece, I am going to look into getting my hands on some of the other stuff that dropped in this collection because some of it looked a little bit more sensibly sized than this particular one here, if I do. I will, of course, be talking about those in future videos. That does it for me on this one, guys. Let me know what you think about this Yeezy Gap Balenciaga hoodie. Let me know what you think about the collection in general. If I had to pick one, I would say go for the traditional Yeezy Gap, not this engineered by Balenciaga version. Those hoodies slap. Those hoodies are amazing. I should have worn it in this video, but oh boy, great movie. Uh, trigger warning, but good movie if you haven't seen it. And so yeah, let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Join the fam if you haven't already, guys. We're expanding this channel to bigger, better, greater things. I want all of you to be a part of it. I love and appreciate each and every last one of you guys. You guys are what makes the sneaker channel great. It's not me, it's you. I love you. I hope to see you on the next one. Peace.